So this is something I've been restoring over the past uh, few months and I finally finished it and thought I'd make a quick video about it. So what we have here is a very nice uh, Victorian era walking stick. I picked this up at my local flea market several months ago and uh, I'd been slowly uh, refurbishing it ever since then. Uh, this stick was very, the stick was quite battered. It was very cheap when I bought it, um, mostly because there were all kinds of things that were broken and missing and loose. And so I managed to get it for a bargain. And I confess the reason I bought it was because uh, it had a very nice ivory handle at the top which I thought was uh, kind of rustic and elegant. And I'll just walk through uh, basically what this stick is. So we have the handle at the top with the uh, disc of ivory here. Uh, the ivory had actually come off when I bought this stick, so I had to uh, clean it and glue it back on. Then we have the main body of the handle, which again is uh, lathe spun ivory along here. Then a little further down, we have a sterling silver ring for a collar, um, just to make a nice transition between the ivory and the wood. Uh, also because there was a, a fairly sizable gap between the uh, ivory and the shaft and I wanted something to mask that and hide it and make it a little more decorative so I found a nice big silver ring just cheap one you know $15, $20 at the flea market um, and I resized it and shoved it in there um, there's there's no glue or anything holding this on it's just it's just pure friction so um, basically, I resized it to fit the shaft, slid it on, and then just with a uh, mallet, you just tap it into place, and it just, just friction holds it in. So, as you can see, it's really firmly in there. Then, a little further down, I put another silver ring. Uh, again, sterling silver, didn't cost much, you know, $15, $20. Um, and again, it's just tapped into place, held in by friction. And then at the very bottom, I have another piece of silver. And this is the ferrule at the bottom. Um, when I bought this stick, I'll just swing this around. When I bought this stick, there was no ferrule on the bottom. Um, it had fallen off at some point and the seller had never bothered or tried to replace it. Um, it's really common on antique walking sticks for ferrules to be made of brass, but I have heard of uh, people making ferrules out of silver and of people uh, using like old silver thimbles and stuff to uh, serve as new ferrules. So I found this little, I'm not even sure what it is, um, little hallmarked um, cup or cap or maybe it is a thimble, I don't know. Uh, anyway, it was the right size. So I applied some glue to the stub inside here and then I just shoved it on, tapped it into place and yeah, it's, not, it's on there nice and firm and I just put a bit of uh, rubber on the end to protect the silver from the ground. Um, while this is an antique walking stick, um, there is one interesting uh, historical fact about this, and that is the size of the ferrule. As you can see, this is quite small. This is maybe half an inch. Um, yeah, about, I'd say half an inch. And on some really old walking sticks, like from the 1600s, 1700s, the ferrules are actually quite long. You know, they'll be 
three, four, five, six. I have seen some which are, you know, eight inches long, which is incredibly long for something which is, I mean, this stick is, uh, this stick is about 32 inches. So to have an eight inch ferrule is quite a lot. Um, but yeah, the reason for that is because, you know, back in the days when people walked everywhere, a lot of the roads were really terrible. I mean, you know, you barely had roads. You had mud tracks, you had dirt roads that turned to slop when it rained. If it snowed, you were walking through mush. And the problem was, if you were walking everywhere, it was very hard on your feet. Um, it was very sore, and so people carried walking sticks um, as a fashion accessory, but also to take some of the load off when they were walking, just for the sake of comfort, and also for uh, purposes of personal defense. Uh, remember, there was no police in those days, so if you were walking around and someone tried to attack you, then uh, that's what this nice chunky ivory head is for, whack them on the head, get them back. Um, but as they were walking around, the stick would sink into the mud and the gloop and the moisture would start to dry rot the bottom of the walking stick. And so to protect it, you would put a ferrule on. The problem is the stick would sink into the mud so much that the ferrule had to be longer and longer and longer. Um, but as time went by and you started having paved roads and footpaths, um, there was no need for the ferrule to be so long. So as you reach the uh, Victorian era, uh, 1850s, coming up to the 1900s, ferrules started getting shorter and shorter and shorter. I mean, you drop from six or eight inches down to three inches, two inches, one inch, and then you have something like this, which is about half an inch. You know, it's a tiny little silver cap. But that little silver cap will protect the end of the walking stick. And so, yeah, there we have it. Uh, nice little silver and ivory antique, I'd say late 19th century, mid to late 19th century, uh, gentleman's walking stick with a nice ivory knob handle. Anyway, that's the... Uh, end of the video. If you want to know a bit more about the history of walking sticks and uh, a bit of their design and functionality and purpose, then I do have a link to uh, an article which I wrote on my blog and you're welcome to check it out. I'll leave the uh, link in the description below. If you have any questions, then please post them and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for watching.